Sound check, sound check, sound check, sound check. Sound check, sound check, sound check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sound check. Hey. Sound check, sound check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sound check. Hey. Sound check, sound check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Tanya the room. Sound check. Sound check, sound check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.
Hello, everyone. We're about to start. So uh, for the resource persons who are present virtually, please turn on your camera so I can acknowledge you uh, in the next minute or two when we officially start the hearing. Good afternoon, everyone. We're calling to order this uh, hearing. This is a continuation of the hearing we had last week. Uh, this is uh, the Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation, and Futures Thinking, joined with the Committee on Public Services, Local Government, Health, and Demography, and Finance. This meeting is called to order. <clears throat> Um, to Well, for, for those who are just joining us for the first time in this hearing, welcome. Uh, for the resource persons who were here last week, thank you. And uh, thank you thank you for being here last week and thank you for being here again today. Uh, for the record, this hearing will cover a number of bills. Uh, these are Senate Bills number 16 on Water, Sustain Water Sustainability Act, which is my bill. Uh, Senate Bill number 310, an act to promote rural health by providing an acceler accelerated program for the construction of a potable water supply system in every barangay in the country within three years by our Senate President, Juan Miguel Subiri. And Senate Bill number 1048, Safe Drinking Water Act, filed by our Majority Floor Leader, Senator Joel Villanueva. Uh, this also includes this privileged speech that I delivered on World Water Day last March 22. I will not include the summary of the hearing anymore because this has already been, this is off record. You can watch the video. It is on YouTube, so that's easy for everyone to do. Um, for those new to this hearing, uh, the the I'd like to to put emphasis on the fact that this is being heard by the Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation and Futures Thinking because precisely of the overlapping effect of not having a sustainable water supply. So this is this actually this hearing actually does not include the creation of a water department, uh, whatever water um, office that the that uh, the government would like to have. Although we have touched on it, you can touch on it, um, but it really is on the overlapping SDGs on uh, on on people being able to live well, on poverty being exacerbated by lack of clean water, on good health being affected, on sustainable cities and communities not being achieved achieve because precisely of water and how this affects the different communities. There's always a supplier and there is always a, a receiver of the supply. So we'd really like to have a healthy interchange of uh, um, uh, observations, expert uh, opinions on this. And so I would um, humbly ask that you do not read any long position papers because that is for our assignment to read those position papers uh, before or after the hearings, not during. I'd rather you emphasize the points you want to make so that we can have a discussion. I have less than two hours because we have a session today. And so without further ado, I will call on our first resource person for the day uh, from Save Sierra Madre Network Alliance. Uh, we have the chairperson, Ms. Araceli Mercado and Father Montaliana with us, the former chairperson. And I am told it is Father Montaliana who will uh, deliver the position of uh, the Save Sierra Madre Network Alliance. Welcome and the floor is yours. And then we also have later on, I will uh, call on the those physically present first. So after that, we will have local water utilities administration. Be ready na lang. Father, the floor is yours. Magandang hapon po. Pwede po Tagalog na lang ako. Mas bihasa ako sa Tagalog. I work with the indigenous people. Yes. Kung saan kayo comfortable? Okay. Yung maraming salamat at na-consultan niyo kami 
we have been kami ay matagal na nana sa Sierra Madre and we have observations about how water is being treated sa Sierra Madre. Ang isang malaking observation po namin ay maraming tao ang nag-iisip na akala nila ang tubig ay nanggagaling sa dam. Mali po yun. Ang tubig hindi galing sa dam. Ang tubig ay galing sa mga kahoy at sa forest. At kung mayroong mang malinis na tubig, yun ay galing din sa forest. Hindi mga chemicals naglilinis ng tubig, kundi yung biodiversity na nasa gubat natin. In fact, one of the experts sa Sierra Madre nagsabi na ang pinakang malinis at magandang tubig ay nagagaling sa Sierra Madre. So, ma- ma- mahalagang madisabius natin yung ating pag-iisip tungkol doon. Pangalawa, ay yung observation namin na uh, tayong Pilipino ay mahilig tayo magamit ng tubig kasi biyaya ng Diyos sa atin. Napakaraming tubig dito sa Pilipinas eh. Kaya, uh, kwan tayo sa tubig, uh, waldas. But, ang tubig ay, kwan a fresh water is already a uh, lumilit na lang dahil lang sa nasira natin ng forest, uh, andyan yung locking, andyan yung quarrying, andyan yung road expansion, andyan yung, ano yun, yung dadami ng mga subdivision. At maraming umaagaw ng forest sa atin. In fact, ang forest natin ngayon ay just 15% na lamang ng dati. In 1900s, we had a lot of forest. Pero ngayon ay hindi na sustainable ang forest natin. At yung ating programa sa forest, yung NGP, ay hindi na NGP, kundi IGP, Income Generating Project. I hope the DNR is listening na talagang ayusin talaga yung pag ng forest para madumami ang forest natin. Yun ang pinagagaling ang tubig. So, yun yung mahalaga po siguro. So, ang pasis namin ay take care of the forest at the same time, magkaroon tayo ng water management. Yung water management, alimbawa ako, noon, nung hindi pa ako namumulat sa kalikasan, pagkas naliligo tatlong balde. Ngayon, <laughs> ay isang balde na lang. Kasi mayroon pang ibang gagamit ng tubig. Pwede ko ba akong mag-comment dun sa sinabi nyo? Nung dati hong uh, nakausap ko din yung isang manufacturer ng sabon, kinikwento sa akin na, hindi talaga mapalitan daw yung uh, practice ng mga Pilipina, mga nanay, na kailangan tatlong kula, tatlong rins. So parang tatlong ligo, isasabay ko na ho yun dun sa, di ba, yung frame of mind siguro. Talagang frame of mind po. Frame of mind pa kasi nga, kung dati ganun talaga, eh ngayon, talagang kailangan magbago, di ba? Kailangan magbago Sinabi talaga. Sinabi pa nga nila sa akin na nag-develop sila ng, yun nga, in the interest of sustainability, nag-develop yes, sila ng product na talaga namang after isang kula, tanggal na talaga yung sabon. Eh hindi daw talaga eh, talagang pagpipilit. <laughs> Tapos pa hindi pa pala happy kasi kulang daw sa bula. Anyway, example lang na nakita ko yung good intention naman ng company and yet hirap na hirap silang ma-communicate yun dun sa mga user. So, ang ganda ho na sa si inyo nang gagaling yung uh, mga observation. I'm really enjoying what you're saying. Kaya, uh, alam ko may, may timeline itong staff ko sa inyo, pero ako na magsasabing habaan nyo pa ng konti. At kung po, yung ikinunig natin yung water sa hanap buhay, yung pinagkakitaan ng tubig, I mean, I, I think we should disabuse that. May karapatan ng bawat tao sa malinis at maraming tubig. Hindi lamang sa may pera. So, sana makagawa ng sistema para ang tubig is available for all. Hindi para sa negosyo. Kasi ang, ang mga taong nagninegosyo ng tubig, siyempre gagawa ng dam. Mas maraming tubig, mas maraming kita. Ay, kawawa naman yung mga katutubo. Ang, ang mentality po ng katutubo, I have been with them for 28 years na. Ang mentality ng katutubo, ang kalikasan ay kapatid. You don't abuse yung produkto ng kalikasan. Only what you need. Kung siguro tayo mga katutubo lahat, hindi tayo magkakaproblema sa tubig. But ang mentality natin na nabrainwash na tayo ng virus na galing sa abroad. <laughs> Materialistic. Uh, commercial na ating isip lagi, pagkakakitaan. So, I think, 
yung mentality. At the same time, hindi naman tayo ano yung old fashion. We use technology. Halimbawa, sa Singapore, yung wastewater ay nagagamit pa nila. At ito'y ginagamit naman na excuse, mahal daw. Pero hindi na sinasabing totoo dito sa Kaliwa Dam. Sinasabi na ang Kaliwa Dam is the, the cheapest. Pero hindi sinasabi na yung Kaliwa Dam, it will only last for five years. At pagkatapos nang gagawa na naman sila ng dam, either Agus Dam or Laiban Dam. Hindi yun sinasabi sa tao. Tapos itong boring na ginagawa na ngayon sa Tanay, sa Teresa, ay ilalagay ito sa, sa bill ng mga consumers. Tinatago nila yun. Ay laki ng bill doon. Hindi yun. And at the end of the day, grabe ang babayaran natin sa tubig na sabi nila ay pinakamura. Ang pinakamura ay Ma water management. At tapos yung ating mga dams, ang ating dams ay silted na. Ba't hindi ko kaya yun sa halip na gumawa ng ibang dam? At you will displace thousands of people. Mahalaga po sa atin ang katutubo kasi ang katutubo ang siyang merong concern sa kalikasan. We, I learned a lot from them. And pa kung bakit ako simple ngayon, I hope I'm simple ay dahil sa kanya, sa kanila. Father, can I just get a clarification sa statement nyo? Ang okay. sinasabi nyo po is, with the creation of more dams, yes. there will be people displaced. Yes, and opo. More, and most of those displaced are indigenous people. That's, yes, that's indigenous. one of the statements that opo. you are, are, are emphasizing. Opo. Okay. When on the contrary, ang gusto nyong ma ma-recognize is that sila pa nga ang nagpapangalaga ng, ng water resources natin. Yes. What, well, the forest and yes. the water resources. Opo. And yet sila ho ang tatamaan with the dams. Mm. Hindi lang po dam, yung mining, yung ano yun, yung expansion ng roads, yung ilagad di bilagan road ay tinututulan namin pero nagkaroon ng kakaibang style yung DNR ginawa nilang yung forest ay ginawa nilang multi-use, multiple use. So, one way excuse na yung forest ay gawan mo lang ng kalsada. Wala na yun. Tina mo, nagbaba doon sa Isabela sa Cagayan because we destroyed the forest. Nakita namin mga centuries old trees. At this time, na climate change, I think we have to come out with a very good water management plan. Tayo ay umiinit na ng gusto. It, it is responsible of everyone na ayusin natin ang mundo. So we have to come out with a sustainable water management. Mahalaga po ito. Kaya I, I really support this uh, initiative. Mahalaga po. Thank you for that. And uh, yan yung gusto kong discussion na tie up nyo din po sa um, sustainable forest management, which may build in tayo dyan, separate pa, but they should not really be separate. And then uh, yun nga, yung kabuhayan and uh, the life of uh, not just the indigenous people, but other people affected by this. So thank you very much for your presentation. I'll go now to uh, Local Water Utilities Administration. Uh, Attorney Vicente Homer Reville, uh, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam uh, Chairperson, Senator Pia Cayetano. To all the members of this committee, um, uh, fellow uh, resource persons, uh, friends, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am uh, Vicente Homer Reville, the administrator of the Local Water Utilities Administration. And uh, we are here to present about uh, what is LUA. LUA is a government owned and controlled corporation created under the Provincial Water Utilities Act of 1973. LUWA is a specialized lending institution that creates and develops local water districts outside national capital region. And what we are doing here is that we are developing level three uh, distribution. Um, it formed 875 local water districts, 532 are operational. 
it is in the 995 cities and municipalities, um, there are 22.3 million people that are served with 5,461,000 households using the PSA 4.1% 4 4 uh, for, the, for the household and the population served. Regarding the cities and municipalities covered outside Metro Manila, uh, it covers the 995 local uh, cities and municipalities. It, it comprises 62% of the cities and municipalities and 38% or 622 cities and municipalities are not covered by the local water districts. On the households served outside the NCR, uh, as of December 22, there are 22,894,254 households outside NCR. And we at Lua, we are serving 24% or 5,461,000 households. However, the rest of the country uh, that we have not served uh, through the lo local water districts, there are about 17,433,000 households, but they may also be served by the other water service providers, such as the local government units, the cooperatives, the private water providers, and the rural water uh, providers. Uh, now, L Lua's goal, in sync with the national goal of PDP 2023 to 2028, uh, Lua aims to provide adequate and sustainable safe water and sanitation services in the countryside by 2030 through self-reliant local water districts. Now, what are the issues and challenges uh, that is besetting the local water utilities administration and also with the water districts? Uh, let me start with the uh, water source. The water source um, is a major issue and challenge for us because the continued extraction of groundwater water results in the depletion of groundwater. The negative effects of groundwater depletion include degrad degradation, of water level on wells and reduction of water levels in streams, rivers, and lakes. And at the same time, it is the call of this president that we should prioritize surface water as the primary source, but it can be very costly also because the treatment is necessary to make it safe for drinking. And also, there's also the decline in the level of surface and groundwater that which can also occur naturally as a result of prolonged dry spell, frequent occurrence of El Nino, and changes in our climate. And also as regards to the funding, huge investment is required to finance new construction, expansion, rehabilitation, and maintenance of water supply system, including construction, of water treatment plants for surface sources. Poor and low income municipalities are unable to afford the high cost of water infrastructure and access to financing becomes a problem. Furthermore, the national government support for water supply development is very low. In the last five years, 2019 to 2023, Lua has been granted only a total of 2 billion pesos, which is way below Lua's investment requirements to achieve the national goal. And for the record, I would like to put it here in this uh, Honorable August Chamber that for 2023, only 16 million pesos had been appropriated under GAA for Lua, and it's only for sanitation and zero budget for water development. Uh, we should- I'm confused. Uh, can, we, can we go back to your numbers? You said before the 16 billion- 16 million yeah, only. 16 million? Only. 
for 2023. From 2 billion, umangal ka pa na naging 16 billion. Yung pala naging 16 million. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when I took over as the administrator of Lua three months ago, I was surprised with this figure uh, because this was only given and a very small sanitation project only at Maragondon. Et yung 2 billion, kailan yun? Previous? For the past 19, uh, 2019 to 2023, spread 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, yeah, for that's, five that's years. Super. That's that's. Over for five years, we were only given about 2 billion pesos. Uh, and well, for this year, 2023, we're only that's given 16. So were you able to check the records, the hearing records and ano na? But binabaan yan? Like, was, was, were the funds utilized naman? Uh, the funds are, uh, the, had the been utilized. Billion, they were fully utilized that naman. billion actually, most of them kasi came from Typhoon Yolanda. So it's not really our primary budget. So, so binigay, it was lang binigay lang sa amin yung pondo to, to rehab the... To rehab, but it yes. wasn't... Uh, so it it's not, not our primary... even address all these gaps. Yes, ma'am. So you never had funding to address these gaps. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'll go straight to my concern, but I, I'm not going to... I, I allow you to continue, no? But just be sure masama mo to dun sa nire-report mo ngayon. Um... How do you, do you have like a five year, ten year plan? Because twenty thirty is the goal, and you have it here. You 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 recognize no the twenty thirty sustainable development goal commitment Ye we have. So you have a plan for this. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have the PBBM uh, legacy okay uh, program but for Dua and for uh, for water and sanitation for the entire country. Okay. Uh, that is Patubig sa buong bayan at mamamayan project. Okay. And we are envisioning to have at least. 5 billion continuing uh, appropriation for Lua to the water districts for the next five years. Okay, so 5 billion per year. Per year, that okay. is what we are going okay. to ask. Okay. Um, and and uh, ngayon, on, uh, ongoing yan dapat ngayon. We are your we just, uh, with DBM. Yes, madam. Okay. Uh, we are just submitting. Uh, today is the okay. day that we have to submit to DBM. And okay. uh, before I left the office, we already okay. submitted the and 5 billion proposal. This is consistent proposal. with no less than the president's priority plan. Yes, so you need to keep us updated on that. Like obviously, DBM will look at your proposal and to see how realistic it is, how um, pract well realistic, practical it is. Then you keep, you you continue to give us feedback. So five billion a year until well, at the very least, until the term of the president. Yes, right? until the okay. term. Okay, go ahead. Yes, ma'am, and I would like now to just uh, uh, include that, saying that uh, we at Lua we intend to have at least twelve percent increase of uh, service coverage. And what, what together with the water I'm district, what, what is that coverage for the increase of numbers of a uh, household household that will be served? Oh. And also, we're looking at uh, additional uh, together with the local water districts. We're looking at an increase of thirty three percent for the next five years. If we'll be given a budget of five billion per year, increase of thirty percent, thirty three percent, thirty percent, thirty percent. Thirty percent. Are you talking about the household or the population? Because you have to population, population of thirty percent population for the next five years. So <clears throat> at the end of the term, uh, we're looking at thirty percent increase. Just a minute. So if you will increase, because okay, I'm trying to understand this. Uh, are are we talking about? If you consider that you have 24% of the households outside of NCRs being serviced, 30% increase of that is additional 7%. Is that how I compute it? Um, no, 24 plus 30. What What do you mean? We are, here tayo sa expectations. Um, I will start first, ma'am, with uh, what local water utilities administration's present condition. Okay. Uh, so we uh, we at Lua we have a uh, present uh, we have a um, we have uh, four point sixty seven million um, uh, five point forty six million uh, households households sure. served. Okay. Uh, on the part of Lua, if you'll be given an investment of five billion per year. We're looking to increase in the next five years additional 670,000 households served or 2.7 million uh, population that will be served with additional water supply and sanitation. So and that's that, an additional... That's 12%. An addition. That's only 12%. Now, I'm um, that's, I'm talking only about the on the part of Lua. 
if we'll be having that five billion investment. But also, I, I am correlating this because we are together with the local water districts. And with the local water districts, uh, we have also um, uh, targeted an increase of about uh, 1.14 million additional households served because they themselves, they also do, do their own expansion also as a GOCC. So based on our targets, we are aligning with each other. We'll be having an additional uh, 4.67 million additional population served or additional um, to about 20%. So we're looking at a conservative of 30% for the entire uh, local water uh, districts um, additional service and the, lo and the local water utilities administration additional service. For a year? For the next five years, ma'am. It will take five years. Five years. But we should have a consistent at least what five billion per year. What is the raw number uh, undertaken by Lua in uh, the water districts? What is the total number? Uh, we're looking at um, 1.8 additional household that will be served. And that increase is 33% households that we're going to serve in the next five years. We have a presentation, ma'am, that we can also uh, provide later. With that is, um, if you ask me, no, uh, there is a there is a gap for me in terms of expectation and your reality. Your reality meaning at, at least what you're presenting to me. Because when you tell me that there's a PBB, anong pro, pangalan ng program? PBB what? PBBM, PBBM program. At tubig sa buong bayan at mamamayan. Yeah. Uh, I'm hopeful because I'm always happy if no less than the president will take recognition of a problem. But when you break it down into details and you tell me there's a 33% increase, which is additional 1.8 million household, I look at what you also provided and the gap is... 17.4 17 million households unserved. So if you will uh, say that in five years you will cover 1.8 million, that's barely 10% of the unserved. Do I understand that correctly? Are those... So that's... That's still uh, that's so way small. small. That's why we have to... Uh, well, the... the, the Capacity nyo ba is hanggang doon na lang talaga? I know you're coming from a non-existing budget. 16M for sanitation, and I'm, a, I'm big on sanitation because I always said include sanitation in the, in, the, in the conversation. It shouldn't just be about supply. It should also be about sanitation. So I understand the importance of sanitation. So you're basically zero budget. So of course, 5B is a lot. But is that all you're capable of? Because it's barely a dent. Uh, well, if uh, with the good graces of our... Uh, legislators, if we can, uh, with the are part you, with the purse. Are you capable? That's that's what we need. Eh. You need to have an ambitious plan. And then you break it down. And ito ba sobra-sobrang ambisyoso? Kahit na ito na yung number one priority natin sa Pilipinas, kaya ba? Kung kaya, then tell me. Kung hindi kaya, then what is 50% of that? Because 10%, uh, that's a ma Madam Chair, uh, uh, for the record, uh, we would like to submit a 10 billion budget actually to dbm but we only submitted five billion budget why submit um, 10. give uh, me give me your breakdown for 10 and i will push for it but you the, the, parang nakakaloko tayo ng tao eh, to tell us and i feel like it's also an insult to the president kasi papangalanan niyo ng pangalan niya and then you're barely covering 10% of the ano parang kung ako siya sasabihin ko na huwag niyo nga ipangalan sa akin yan <laughs> kasi Luloko ko lang yung mga tao para sabihin ko sa kanilang i-solve ko yung problem nyo and then 90% of the unserved will remain, 90, will remain unserved. Uh, ma'am, on the, because ma'am, in the entire country, ma'am, uh, it's only not, it's only not, it's on, not only Lua or the water districts, there are other providers. Uh, looking at your figure, I'm looking at your, if you want to go back, no, Who, who's handling the, the slides. I'm looking at the slide that says household served outside NCR. So I'm just point. basing it on that. So when you tell me na 1.8 million yung ma-achieve nyo in five years, I'm saying that's 10% of the 17 million that is unserved. 
So, so there will still be 90% of that 17 million that is unserved, correct? Uh, ma'am, let me put this in the right context. Correct, please, naman. Uh, I am very patient. Yes, ma'am. Uh, regarding, ma'am, the 76%, we are not say saying that um, uh, it is not served by, 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 anyone. by anyone. But it can be served also by the LGUs. It can be served also by the cooperatives and the private water providers and the rural water providers. That is a very important context. Yes, ma'am. To show me a slide that tells me who are unserved period. Walang nagseservisyo sa kanila. I understand luwa ka. Hindi mo naman hawak lahat yan. Yes, ma'am. Pero I am relying on you for context. So thank you for that clarification. And I did not understand. So you need to show me another, another circle graph that tells me who is serving what and what is unserved? Um, as, as regards to my graph, on the serve part, which is 5,461,000 households, we are going to increase on the part of blue alone. We're going to add, let's go to the part of serve. And I know na, so, so 5.4, magdadagdag ka ng 1.8. That is why you are saying you are increasing by 33%. Yes, ma'am. I understand. But what is that pie? What is that pie? What is that need? Walang bali wala sa akin yung figure na yan when I don't know the total need. So is the total need 5.4 plus 17? Tama? Yes, ma'am. That is the total. Okay. So on your part, uh, you are serving additional 1.8. So of the total, your total 17 0.4 plus 5.4 is almost 24 million. 22 million, ma'am. 22 million 892. That's our pop. On the, on the higher, on the top, that's, we have 22 20, million. Close to 23. 23 20 million okay, households. So okay. Yes, ma'am. Sige. So, so 23 million, but I still don't know what, when you say 76 is not served by... It's beyond our jurisdiction. That's what beyond I... Beyond your jurisdiction. Yes, so what is within your jurisdiction? Uh, within our jurisdiction, we are now uh, covering the 995 cities and municipalities. And ma'am, uh, let, let me put this into the right context because um, for the past 50 years, uh, the PD uh, uh, had been there, the, the law had been there for the past 50 years. And uh, we, have, we, have, we were able to uh, have uh, 5,461,000 households served for the past 50 years. So, um, whereas during this time, we are looking at a possible additional 1.8 million uh, that we are going to have as an additional coverage for the household. So, uh, in what I'm saying as a context, uh, it's the figure is, a, uh, it's already, a, uh, I would say, a big, bold, audacious uh, uh, that, uh, program that we are trying to embark. Uh, 1.8 divided by 5,461,000. So that's about 33% increase. Yes, ma'am. understand. That's why I was not clear to me where you got the 33%. So I understand. The 33% comes. Yeah, I know now. I know now. It is, it is uh, 1.8 million is 33% of the five. Point forty six, but I still want to understand of the twenty two million households, who is merong kabang chart that tells me now? Because you already said here, uh, naka asterisk na yan eh. sa seventy six iba iba ang nagsa service. Do you know? Kung, do you have a division of that? Can you see that? Can we see that? Uh, Ma'am, uh, we will submit uh, okay. data for that because we have to validate it with the other providers. And I still don't understand because um, any of these other providers, whether it's the LGU themselves, a cooperative, a private, private water provider, what does RWSA stand for? Rural, Rural Water Works. Any of them can step up and provide, correct? Yes, ma'am. So the reason I want to see, but you can also step up and provide. Diba? Kasi, yes, kumbaga, you can enter into that. Because kasi you are anywhere outside of NCR, correct? Kaya nga. So in the totality of that, um, it's not accurate to say walang nagsaservice ng 76. But that's the info I need. Uh, yes, ma'am. Because we know, ano nga ba yung nasa speech ko? Five million ang walang access to clean water? 
11? 11 million. So that's the info I'm trying to get out of these hearings. Remember, we even in the last hearing, there we also had the question, iba pa yung 11 million, iba pa yung percentage of this and that. So I'm trying to get to the bottom of uh, what is that exact number and who will now service that? What is the plan? Okay? Thank you. Ma'am, uh, we'll provide that uh, data. Uh, I, I'm now uh, going back to our data bank uh, because uh, Lua has a very uh, extensive and uh, 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 nationwide coverage on the data bank. So we can provide the, this committee on that. So can I... Because when you go back to a PBBM plan, then I would assume that the president, like me, would like to know, okay, what is your contribution? Ikaw, ano contribution mo? Ikaw, ano contribution mo? Tell me the totality. Kasi I cannot be happy about one person's performance if I do not know what all the others are. I need to see the total. Will this crisis be solved in the next five years, ten years? Will it provide a sustainable plan? Okay? Thank you. Uh, thank you for that um, for that uh, consideration for Lua, ma'am. Because uh, as I've been saying that uh, with budget, uh, we should really put where our mouth is, uh, where we should put money where our mouth is, so to speak. Yes, so. And, and my assignment for my team is to find what I'd like to know also is like, so yun nga, yung breakdown kung sino ngayon ang nagsiservice ng iba-iba and sino yung pinaka-efficient. So if you tell me na, unfortunately, sa amin mababa kasi wala nga kaming... Pondo. O sige, pero ano yung capability nyo? I will ask you that question and as I will ask each one of them. It will be part of my slide, ma'am, oh. the, towards the end, ma'am. Uh, uh, on, uh, on the third challenge, ma'am, uh, can we go to? On the third challenge, uh, we're looking at also at the uh, low service coverage because most uh, local water districts fail to expand their service coverage due to high capital requirements. Uh, just this morning, ma'am, uh, I've been talking with... Um, a lot of water districts, and they're asking a lot of funding. Um, kung, kung, well, this is the plan, ma'am. If ever uh, the funds will be given to us uh, for uh, readily, uh, implement, ready, ready implementation, we will just download it directly to the water districts uh, concerned, and they can have it bid it out, then it can be easily implemented on their end. Curious, what would, uh, I mean, I suppose that budget is based on population, more or less, population in the budget per district. Per, per LGU? Uh, what, no, ma'am. you will uh, download to them? This is the situation, ma'am. It is needs-based because... Uh, and that need, um, in a nutshell, that need would be based on population and geographic. Ano? Kasi pe pwedeng konti lang sila, pero kalat-kalat sila. So magast mas magastos yun. Kaysa sa medyo mas marami sila, pero dikit-dikit sila. Tama ba? Yes, ma'am. So ano yung average cost nun? I mean, I know it's all different, but what, what would be... Uh, like if you say 5 billion for one year, ilan ang, ang LGU na matutulungan nyo sa 5 billion na yon? The average cost, ma'am, if it's it, in terms of uh, more water connectivity, more distribution for safe and affordable drinking water, it's about 25 million okay. per, per water district. Okay. But if we, we are talking about uh, uh, STP or sanitation uh, projects, it's, on the average, it's about 70 million. So uh, I know that all the, together or just for the sanitation? For sanitation each. So 70, uh, 70 ma'am. That's so why together mga ninety-five. Uh, yes, ma'am. If you wanted it to be very comprehensive, but uh, I um I would it's we cannot just give it uh, at one time to them. So because we are GOCCs, actually we make our operations sustainable. We are not we are we uh, we would like also our op it uh the funds given to us to be judiciously uh used. Because we have to sustain our operations, uh, our maintenance, our some of our capex. But what administrative we cost nyo? We do not ask funds coming from the national government on that. Actually, we 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 use our own funds uh, because we have it. We loan it to the water districts at about four percent, uh, and based uh, on those revenues, our lending institution, lending I get institution, okay. ma'am, and but, engineering okay. services. I understand it. Okay, before we move on, and uh, before I allow you to to continue and to finish, no, is there a way that you can roll out the the these amounts, like kun kumbaga sa sa first part, no, which is the supply, um, isang bigayan na yon 25M or isa na yon yun na yon yun na yon you cannot give less that's what uh, we, we can give less we can give more but I'm just saying on yeah, average sorry. sorry you can give less you can give more but that's the average correct? that's the average okay. one but I mean um, 
that's the that's the package more or less yes, for ma'am. for them to have to to establish their clean water supply. Uh, actually, okay. ma'am, um, if if we just want to set up a new water district, we're looking at about fifteen million pesos as, as a startup capital. Okay, for so them. pwedeng fifteen. Pwedeng fifteen. So on the on the sanitation side. You also give a portion kasi hindi ko masikmura yung wala eh. Kasi so much of the discussions yes last week on health is related to sanitation. May I answer, ma'am? Of course. Regarding the sanitation, ma'am, um, actually it's the bigger challenge because the water districts, uh, they can barely um, sustain their operations. So actually uh, they wanted more to have first the connectivity to the households. That is their first priority. Because that's where they earn, earn money too. However, if they're going to invest for their capex, capital uh, expenditure for their sanitation, it's a huge amount of money. So it seems for the past two years, 2021 and 2022, uh, we were able to uh, be downloaded by about 500 million per year. And uh, the beneficiary water districts are only about five or six water districts. And uh, part also of our sustainability, uh, now we're lending. 50% and we're, we're giving a grant of 50%. But eventually we're looking at if these are big water districts, then we will have let, let them lend it for about 100%, but zero, cap, zero interest. So we're looking at the sustainability of our projects. But most of the good thing, ma'am, with this is that because of the mandamus uh, ruling by the Supreme Court regarding the uh, implementation yes. for, the, for yes. the sanitation, all of them really wants to have these projects. So uh, download it to them because otherwise they'll be pay, paying a penalty for it. So uh, that in itself is our big ticket. They will support. pay a penalty because violation of the law. Sila mo penalty hindi kayo. Hindi mam kami because uh, they are the ones providing uh, for the for the, the water so district. Pero allocate na yung funding na yan for them kaya lang hawak nyo lang. Uh, er, well, this is mam the the peculiar um, situation with the ah, with the understand. local water utility, utilities administration and uh, with the water districts. Magkapatid kami, magkapatid kami. So all all funds uh, course through the water districts should be course through the local water utilities administration. So, so the national budget for water that would now be. Um, be downloaded to the LGUs because of the Mandanas ruling. Mandamus. Is, manda, man, Mandamus. So, uh, mandated. But it's the Mandanas ruling. It's uh, the, uh, Manila Bay. Manila Bay. Ay, okay, okay. For the, but you're referring to the... Oh, tamo lahat. <laughs> lahat ng staff ko. Ah, Mandamus. Yeah. Yung Mandanas ruling on the LGUs um, be having access to the to the funds. It's a mandamus, ma'am. Uh, okay, so to can, implement, you, can you clarify that? Please? Yeah, to implement. We are uh, on a different book, yes. a different page. So this We're is a good a thing, ma'am. We, we are aligning now. So thank you. Uh, with the mandamus ruling by the Supreme Court, they have to implement their sanitation for their respective. They are required. They are required. Correct, correct. correct. So now uh, they'll be penalized. This is for the case. Yes, ma'am. Ah, okay. Ayun sana sinabi mo kasi yung mandamus, oh, mandamus katunog ng Manda mandana. Ah, mandana. So, <laughs> kung sinabi mo oposa, naiintindihan ko na kagad yun. It's the MMDA case, ma'am. Yeah. MMDA case, ma'am. Ah, diba? Yes, ma'am. Oo. Which, yeah, okay. So, they are required to spend it. They are required to, to, to uh, they're required to, to provide. They're, they're, they're required, required to, provide. to provide. So, they will, I'm, I'm sure, mag-uunahan yan. Uh, if we'll be providing for them. Because they have to provide, now, maghahanap sila ng funding. Ng funding. So, utang sila, maghahanap sila ng grant, whatever. That's what you're saying. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, my next question is, um, what percentage of your budget, uh, let's assume na lang you get the 5 billion per year, what percentage of that budget is for loans and what percentage is for grants? And then I tie that up to the Mandanas ruling. Man, because Mandanas? Mandamus. Man, Punta na ako sa Mandanas. Ah, Mandanas, okay. Punta na ako sa Mandanas. Yes, ma'am. So under the Mandanas ruling, uh, if there are services that are supposed to be handled by the LGU, if it is meant to be devolved, then they should handle the funding. So, may ganun ba? Have you had discussions on this? That's why my question was, oh, are you holding the funds for them and they are required to get it from you? Because if they don't get it, sabi ko nga, but dapat ikaw, kayo ang, ano, kasi although you are GOCC and I don't know how the Mandanas ruling uh 
affects GOCCs, but if you were a regular national government unit agency, then you would be required to download that. So that is my question now. With the Mandanas ruling, not Mandamus, do you have anything on that? Uh, regarding ma'am, the Mandanas ruling, it goes directly to the coffers of the local government units. Okay. So who so, would be able to answer my question? Baka it was a resource person yesterday. Now how much is allocated? Uh, um, uh, we are, uh, our our relationship ma'am, uh, is that uh, we have the local water utilities administration that oversees and manages the water districts. Uh, because we are delivering level three services to the population. And uh, that's totally different, ma'am, because uh, uh, we are on, we can only download to the local water districts. We cannot download to the LGUs. Actually, this is the reason why uh, there's a big discussion. The big discussion, ma'am, here is that it's all about sustainability. And sustainability, reliability, and dependability. Sorry, can you just repeat your last statement? Ma'am, uh, this is the situation. Actually, I'm, I'm going towards my last slide, but um, okay. I'll, I'll make it quick, ma'am, with the water quality. Of course, uh, water quality is another issue and challenge. Now, I will go directly... Uh, I'm not ready to leave this, ha? I'm, yes, ma'am. Hindi ako nangiiwan ng topic na hindi ko maintindihan. Yes, ma'am. So, can we now go to the next slide? You're answering me by way of the next slide. Yes, ma'am. Okay. The next slide, please. Uh, this is the Lua local water utilities administration and water district concept. LUA LWD concept has proven a track record of being the best setup for achieving a sustainable, dependable, and reliable water supply because we are doing a level three supply to the members of our population. Hence, it is what is level targeted. one? What is level two? What is level three? Uh, level you... one is the source of water only. The yung mga, mga wells only. Wells or yung mga oh, Okay, wait. We had this spring. discussion last week. Level one is point source. Level point source. Three is commercial. Level three is pipe system. No, level two is communal. A communal pala. Communal. Malikas, so yung uh, may piping din siya, pero the rest of the barangays, public faucet. Parang public faucet okay, siya. That's level two. Whereas tayo sa level three, we have direct faucet to the households. So if we want to be quantifiable and we want to be with the right target, we should do, this is the best format through the local water utilities administration and through to the water districts. Uh, because we have been here for the past 50 years and uh, the office is, uh, is uh, mandated to provide not only financing, but we are here to provide also technical, uh, like we have an engineering support. So just in case they have a problem with their uh, water pumps or something is wrong with their connections, we can easily provide for them. We have also provided for the institutional development. If they have, they, they, they need to undergo trainings uh, for, for, for uh, health, for sanitation, for, for more engineering trainings, we also provide for that. And we also provide regulatory. So uh, they cannot just increase the rates uh, onerously. So we are there to ensure that there's the right financial viability for them. And at the same time, uh, there must be the right public hearing and uh, processes on, on how to ensure that they are, they are properly regulated. And of course, the financial. So this is our setup. So all the, the, the local water, water utilities administration and the water districts, we are GOCCs. So uh, we have, uh, we should um, have the sustainability in our operations. Uh, so, ma'am, that basically ends my presentation. Uh, I'm here, ma'am, to uh, answer some some more of your uh, clarifications or queries to the yeah. Lua and to the water districts. No, I just realized the reason I was confused, I'll go back to my original confusion on served and unserved because the copy that you gave me is probably a draft. It does not have that asterisk on what it means. Eh, dito ako nakatingin. Oh, yan, no, wala ako niyan. Wala ako niyan. <laughs> oh, but I don't have an updated, so...
So that's why yang asterisk na yan. 20% is, yeah. to the good senator the latest uh, presentation. Uh, actually we made the um, we made the clarification on our way here to to the Senate. So that's why I, I know that this will be a very big discussion. So we clarified it. Um, can we please uh, send uh, a okay. copy? Okay. Anyway, um, one last question, then I'll move to the others because I we took more time, um, but I, I was I really wanted to understand this. Um, without a budget, then what was service prior to your term? What was service? Did, did you have a revolving fund? Because my other question before that was, with the five billion, what would be loans and what would be grants? Mom, um, let me answer first the course, first question. Mm -hmm. uh, there are funds downloaded to Lua, mm -hmm. which uh, that Lua uh, initially also requested from the national government. But usually, the biggest that Lua receives is just a billion, a billion and two. And, but uh, it's about that, because I'm going to report this to the media. E sabi mo sa akin, 16 million lang in the past. For that, for, for this the, year, for this year is 16 oh, sorry, million. Sorry, sorry, sorry. To be two clear, pala, two billion over five years. Over five years. Sorry. So you use that. But uh, what, yes, we use it, it already, ma'am. Used before your term. Uh, yes, ma'am. There's an ongoing actually because there's a 2022 budget, so we are and just implementing it now. 22 is 565 million. Okay, and and how much of that is is loans and how much? Five hundred sixty-two, five hundred sixty-two million. How much is loans and how much is grants? Um, actually, um, coming in now as the administrator, before me, the administrator verbally said that he wants it um, a different scheme. But for me, I want it. I want it to be. There must really be a loan part on it. So uh, now, uh, with the with the approval of the Board of Trustees, we're going to make it 50% grant and 50% loan. So that at least 50% of the money will be will return back to the Lua coffers, and we will again support the other water districts who needs also sanitation projects. 50-50. With 0% interest. 50-50. 50%. But, but, but ma'am, uh, now can I go, ma'am, to, to the, uh, regarding the budget, for the past five years, we only have two billion budget, yeah, yeah, you and it's almost it's almost used up. Yes, yes. Uh, so the but other five, other but uh, that five hundred that you have for twenty twenty two is part of is the, the latest. It's the latest, and the reason why you you look at it as a bulk is because you revolve your funds. Because merong kayong utangan, so may bumabalik, tiba. Okay. Um, I have to move on, but my last question lang to understand this is I want to tie it up to the concern. Uh, well, the not concerned, but the position raised by uh, Save Sierra Madre, no? Um, uh, is water meant to be a free resource for all? Is it like the basic, uh, the basic uh, survival um, needs that the country or well, the government, no, uh, owes to its people? And because if we if we have a clear answer to that fundamental question, like for example, uh, the constitution is very clear: free public education. So, kaya nag-start yan free uh, elementary education, and then that was extended to high school, and then it was extended to tertiary. So, what is our stand on water? Hindi ka naman, in, in as much as I'm an education advocate, hindi ka mamamatay kung hindi ka nag-aaral. You, of course, will have a better life if you study, but you won't die. But if you don't have water, you will die. So, on that note, and baka mahaba pa tong discussion, um, you can give me a quick response and then we can talk later. But what portion of that is meant to be a service? And what portion is already considered, maybe not a luxury, pero beyond naman yung Super basic needs. Uh, to answer that, ma'am, um, water is free. Okay. But service is not. Okay. So uh, let's put that in that context. Okay. So at the same time, uh, when we talk about water, we're talking about issue on development. It's always an issue on development. And it is all encompassing. It is holistic. Uh, like, uh, I'll go back again to the mandate of Lua, which is, is, it is imbued with public service, but we are doing a socialized way of developing the water resources of this country. So if you can see that the lending rate, commercial lending rate is about 8%, we're only lending it at 4%.
And most of our 532 water districts are in the developing stage that there must always be a continuing support to them. Otherwise, they will just wither and die, so to speak. Um, that's why if we are really serious in developing our water resources, there must be a, a consistent government policy that will develop our water districts. Because as this is the, the problem that uh, Lua encountered. Because uh, the funding was never consistent. Hence, the targeting uh, never achieved its real potential and the real target. So if we could just uh, ask, uh, and it is the prayer of Lua, if we could have a consistent funding for the next five years, then uh, with God's grace, we can be able to achieve our target. Okay. I wanted to um, add to the discussion, but let me hold it for now. Thank you very much. Uh, anyway, as, as long as we still have time, babalikan ko naman kayo. I saw that. But... Maybe I'll end with this no, on that on that topic. Um, target 6.1 of SDG 6 on clean water and sanitation states. By 2030, achieve universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water for all. So, um, <clears throat> and there's more, no, obviously. Uh, in fact, six, six point, target 6.2 is yung concern ko on uh, sanitation and hygiene. But I guess that's the, that's the, question how in, in in our context because it should be context based what is affordable drinking water but if you're a farmer and we know the income of a farmer uh, we have to ensure that affordable yung too big nayon what's affordable to you all of us who live in the cities we own a car iba yung level of affordability dun sa kanila diba so but we've taken a lot of time maybe balikan Ko kayo later or in the TWG na lang na, how much is that? I'm just curious. Or do you have a figure? Like how much is water in 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 this uh, district versus NCR? Um, and if it's not readily accessible, we can go back to it because I, I have to... One household uh, consumes about 20... 18, 18 to 20 cubic meters. Every household per month, it consumes 18 to 20 cubic meters. Okay. One and, household is about 4.1. And so how much? About 18 to 20 cubic meters. And so how much is that to... It depends on house? how much a the certain water district sells it for. Kaya nga, what is the, uh, what's we're, the range? We're, what is the range? Say, um, sa, so range, sa mga clients nyo. Uh, we're looking about 200. 200. Per 10, per 10 cubic meters. Or two, 20 pesos per cubic meter. 20 or, pesos per cubic meter. And we so would four hundred pesos a month. Yes. So we're, we're even we're even hoping to lessen it. Okay. Thank you. You want to add anything? Your your staff behind you is uh, looking at some looking at their laptop. Um. Uh, our base rate is about uh, 200, 204.03 pesos and uh, 11 to for, for the first 10, it's, it's about 20 pesos per cubic. Uh, yeah, and um, or it's tama ning sinabi niya, no need for additional info. Yun na yun, average lang naman ako eh. tama na yun, di ba? Yes. So 20 pesos per cubic meter. And um, uh, that's times 20 because 18 to 20, so roughly 400. Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
Thank so you. that that that's not too much for a household, and we don't want uh, it, it to, strain, to strain the household's budget. So uh, I'm still coming up with a with a um, with a, an equation in which I would like to really know how much a certain um, household, based on the uh, poverty incidence, how much are they really spending for the for their water per month. I'm trying to come up still with. I'm trying to discuss with the technical group. Yes, I Thank would like to to ensure that because. Water is quarter, it's, it's very much related with the poverty incidence in our country. Of course, yes, I agree. So, and I'm just you. curious, what, what is your background? Do you come from a water, I mean, your, your knowledge is newly acquired or uh, na kayong involved sa water? Ma'am, I, I am a promdi. I came from the province of Masbate. I served before as the local government, in the local government unit, uh, uh, previously okay. as a member of the provincial board, vice uh, governor, okay. and acting capacity as a okay. governor. So, na-handle nyo na itong mga problema ng tubig sa Masbate? Yes, Saan kayo sa Masbate? In the city, but uh -huh. we have a municipality. Uh, but um, yes, um, I've handled, we've handled this and I know how it is to be in a small province uh, uh -oh, and, yeah. and some places has no water. Yeah. The islands doesn't have water. Um, most Masbate of the islands have... in the entire country doesn't have water. When we go there, we bring uh, gallons of water for them. So, ano yan? Binabarko? Uh, binabangka. Ay, bangka pala. Kira bangka namin. Uh, ba? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the, the whole island? Uh, no, no. Some small islands. But in our country, since we are, a, we, uh -huh. we are an archipelago, so it is a, a big issue for the entire country. Right. Okay. Because not all are, are endowed with, uh, with a God-given water, God uh, uh, water source. So uh -huh. uh, the rest of the country has a lot of problem with that, especially, especially in the Visayas area. And okay. because when the, when the typhoon comes on the eastern side, yeah. if... Typhoon uh, butters and destroys the facilities of the water districts. If you cannot, if you cannot uh, respond in a month or two, uh, So at the same time, of course, the poor service for the people. So okay. I can feel those. Yeah. I know the, how these things work. Okay, thank you, thank, thank you for you. that. Sige. Okay, let's move on. Um, Our next uh, speaker will be from the Future Water Asia, from Future Water Asia, Mr. Dondi Alikpala, and then uh, to be re re be ready, uh, Manila Water Services after, and then Manila Water Company. So let me call on Mr. Alikpala, the CEO of Future Water Asia. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi. So um, I have a presentation, but. While they're setting it up, um, I want to address some of the issues that have been raised. I think there's a lot of data. If you look at the annual poverty indicator survey of 2020 of PSA, they pointed out that um, only 54.1% of all Filipinos have household connections. 54%. That's only slightly more than half. That's the level three system. Um, the good senator also said that a lot of how many million people don't have access to sufficient drinking water? Well, we're looking at a population here in 2023 of about 113.7 million Filipinos. Now, the annual poverty indicator survey of 2020 said um, about 91.3 have access to drinking water. So that, I just computed it, that's about 9.9 .9 million Filipinos who don't have access to sufficient drinking water. So that this, these numbers are important. What's also interesting um, in that same survey is that apparently 47.8% of all families rely on refilling stations for their drinking water. So that was, um, that's huge. That means almost 50% of all Filipinos have to go for a uh, refilling station just to be able to drink safe water. So, can, I, can I ask you a question before you yes, proceed? Yes, please. Yes, yes. When, when you say that you computed 9.9 .9 million, can you just repeat uh, how you got to that? And then when right, we say, sure. and when we say don't have access, do you know what that means? Like, does that mean no access directly in your sure. household? No access directly within your household? Or does it mean no access within a five-minute walk? Ano kaya ibig sabihin nun? Go ahead, please. So, in Manila... NEDA has a definition for access, and I think it's um, if you have to travel more than 30 minutes to get water, you don't have access. All right? Wow, huh? and so, access, yes, okay, let, let me just comment on that because NEDA was here, so yeah. I'll double check their, their definition. Yeah. Um, so if you walk 25 minutes, may access ka pala. 
may access ka pa. Oh. Wow. So, wait ha. Let me compute ha. I just really want to compute this. Wait ha. I live... I live... Wait ha. 1.6... I live about 2.5 kilometers away from my mom. So, if it takes me 10 minutes per kilometer... 25 minutes to go to my mom's house to drink water. I am considered a person with access. Wow. It could be considered. So, and to well, see good roads yun. Kasi sa loob okay, ng subdivision yun. Okay. And, and that's even, no, no, I think it's walking. I think it's walking. So, may, may perfect if Neta's there. If it's 30 minutes back and forth or 30 minutes one way, we can try. Exactly. Like tama, tama. O sige. Yeah. We'll ask Neda later. I don't want to interfere now with your, ano. No, no, it's your... fine. O sige, let's ask Neda now. Ah, uh, Neda. Yeah. Sinong speaker natin? Yeah. Brian Cobalies. <coughs> Brian Cobalies, are you prepared Brian. to answer? Hello, Hello. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hi, uh, Brian. Are you prepared to answer? Hello. I don't want to put you on the spot, but are you prepared to answer the definition of access or do you want to get back to us? I'll... Get back to you na lang, ma'am. I'm having my colleagues uh, look into the definition. Sige. Okay. Okay. Ganda pa naman ang okay. background mo. So, yung buong opisina na yan, tawagin mo, tanong mo kung ano access. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you po. Thank you po. Go ahead. All right. Um, Go ahead. So, just just moving on, I said earlier, 47.8% of Filipinos need to go to refilling stations just to get safe water. So, um, that that's a little too high. So I was part of this study that um, helped develop the Philippine Water Supply and Sanitation Master Plan for NEDA. And what we did is we went to all the regions of the country to identify what were the challenges, really. Um, it was later, earlier on, um, Administrator of Lua touched on some of these. And really, number one is water resources are becoming a major problem. So we have five issues here. I'll go over them really quickly. Um, next slide, please. So what we're seeing is water quantity is already becoming a factor. Some wells are drying up. And what's also happening is people have to, you have to go farther and farther just to find water sources to meet your demand. So for example, in Tacloban, I was involved uh, in Yolanda. We had to look for a river that's over 30 kilometers away just to be able to supply water to Tacloban. And even if you find the water sources, the water quality might be suspect because, um, because of this liquid sanitation, a lot of our septic tanks are not properly designed and they're seeping now into our groundwater. So there's a lot of contamination now in a lot of groundwater. Also, the water quality for our rivers are also deteriorating. And on top of that, you're, you also see climate change. So it's not raining where it used to be. So some areas are drying up and some areas are getting flooded. Water resources is a big issue. So for even for many LGUs, they don't even have water in their immediate vicinity. And as the Lua administrator also mentioned, islands are a severe problem because they don't have the capacity of topography to even retain water. So they have to get water elsewhere. Next, please. We said there are problems also in terms of institutions, governments, and, and governance. We don't, first of all, we don't have a single agency in the country responsible for water supply and sanitation. It's one of those tragedies of the common when so many institutions are involved, nobody's already in charge. And that's what we're really trying to push. We need an agency that can be held accountable and to push for improved access for water and sanitation, an area that's overlooked. And when we talk about sanitation, it's not only about toilets, it's making sure that the water from the toilets are properly treated. And I think I'm being a little ambitious here when we say that 10%, because I suspect it's a lot less, 10% of our wastewater is treated. So most of our water just goes to our body, to our bodies of water. All our wastewater goes without proper treatment. Next, please. So we're really also looking for the creation um, of a proper regulatory commission to ensure that all the water utilities operate the way they should be. 
Leadership and management is the third aspect. It's becoming, it's been a problem when we went through all the utilities. Um, a lot of our managers, our board members, unfortunately, are not qualified. And it's through no fault of their own. I mean, the bigger utilities might have engineers and accountants. In the small utilities, unfortunately, they don't have access to those skills. So you might have plumbers and bookkeepers running systems. And they might not have the skills necessary to run water systems. So when we see that there's a proposed bill to put up a barangay system in every barangay, that means we need also that many managers. So that's going to be a daunting task. So there's a fellow who said the problem in water is not scarcity. It's a management issue. I mean, we've seen Singapore. Singapore doesn't even have water but they've been able to manage their water resources, their water utilities very well by applying a water security aspect and looking at water from different dimensions. We don't have to do it for the entire country, but at least we can do it in different parts of the country and we can start in those areas, little by little. Next, please. So um, the Lua administrator talked about his travails on, on financing. Unfortunately, it's still a drop in the bucket. NEDA has computed that we need about 1 trillion pesos over the next 10 years just to achieve universal access. And universal access for the SDG means but we should have it by 2030. Well, the study was made about 10 years ago, so we were looking at about 100 billion per year. Now we're looking at seven years. And so that's going to be a problem. We need about at least 100 billion over 10 year, uh, per year, over 10 years. And I was, I was distraught to hear that Lou was getting 16 million. We have a long, long way to go. Next, please. Well, to be clear, lang, it's uh, 562 million last year, 16 million yung sa sanitation. So may 500 million naman, which is still very, very small. You can still be distraught no, we, with the 500 we million. Need, yeah. We now need over 100 billion a year just to meet Correct. our targets, PDP and SDGs. Long way to go. And last one, I think. Next slide. I try to keep this really quick. I think it's just about political will. Unfortunately, water is not a priority. It's not sexy for a lot of our mayors and LGUs. So it's because a lot of the issues is you need, these are long-term projects and our mayors have three-year terms. So some of them don't want to pursue water projects because they can't see the end of the project. So it's not become a priority. And we need, we need the national agency to compel local governments to improve their access and to improve service. And that's where we think uh, the need for a proper water regulatory agency for the country is long overdue. And that's the last of my slides. Thanks. Thank you so much. I do have a question or two, but um, I just sure. want to um, ask Attorney Reveal, uh, yung from the moment that the, well, from the moment you start engaging with an LG, with a water district, no, for, uh, for, for them, for them to, to get funding from you and for you to provide all the technical support you mentioned, how long bago maset up yon? Kaya yon within the three-year term of the mayor? One uh, year? One and a half? Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is uh, the, the, the how water districts are being formed. It should be initiated by the local chief executive, by the yes. mayor. And uh, there will be an ordinance uh, to create the water district. After that, uh, he can already uh, he can already uh, appoint the five board of directors. After appointing the five board of directors, they will appoint the general manager. And after that, we can already give the seed money about about 15 million pesos. Though... It would be, the moment you give them the seed money, uh, how long does it take them to set it up? Um, well, the first challenge Which really depends. is the source of water. Mm -mm. If the, It depends on where they are located. Uh -oh. If they have a readily ready source of water, just like what, with what happened with San Roque in, in uh, summer, okay. in north, northern summer, we, it was set up for about two years. Okay. Because uh, they have to ensure that the water source should be properly, uh, technically provided. Okay. Pero sila, meron silang nearby water source. Yes, ma'am. That's the advantage. Pag my water wala. source. Ka. 
Yan ang matagal. Pag wala, ma'am, that's also the challenge here with our barangays. Because uh, we cannot, not all barangays are are created the same, that of they have course. the water source. So, um, uh, we, we, we want it uh, water for all. No one is left behind. But the truth of the matter, a lot of our LGUs here in the entire country, they don't have the source. Well, the same, most geographically isolated barangays will have a lot of problems in general. From the schooling, from the access to resources. So it is what it is and we do what we can to address it. No? But I just wanted to know, kung may malapit-lapit na water source, then that's two years. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, okay. And we would like it, ma'am, to be scale. So uh, the bigger, the better. So that if yeah. they have uh, a, a source of water, then they can scale to more LGUs that yeah. they can So provide. that's my next question. But let me let me just go back to uh, Mr. Alikpala. Um, uh, Future Water Asia is a foundation. It's a social... What, what is it? Well, we're really a consulting firm. We try to help You're local consulting firm. address their water and sanitation firm. Um, I okay. used to be the head of the National Water Resources Board. And I used to yes. be the chairman of NWSS also. Okay. Um, so, but your outlook is sustainability? Certainly, of course, yeah. Definitely. So to, uh, yes, it has to be. Okay, so my question for you is basically, and, and it's exactly aligned with the last statement you made, Attorney Reveal, na, uh, how did you put it? Um, if it can be set up in such a way that na ma maximize your access, scale. There's, yeah, it's, it can scale, no? So um, is, is that also your proposal? I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer, right? <laughs> na, um, because the, the water district naman is per municipality, right? Or city, correct? So obviously, it's not just one barangay. So easily, those in the center of the town or city, magkakatabi naman yon. Then they'll have a number that are far flung. But low-hanging fruit naman yung, yung, yung magkakatabi is they, they work together, di ba? Kasi, but can the cities also combine? Or is that, so you can have a water district, o oh yan, ma, ma ano yung yes ng mga nasa likod mo, uh, they can combine. Uh, what's common? Two or three or four or five cities? We have the metro. Uh, we call it the metro water districts. Mm. Metro Davao, ah. uh, uh, Metro Tugigarao, yeah. Metro Cotabato, Metro... But those, but th those are obviously the, the ones with big cities. Tapos may katabing ano. Do, do you see this happening with the smaller municipalities? Mom, it depends on the geographical location. But we would really like them to align, especially if there's a big source of water. This is my proposal, ma'am. If our country can develop, can put a big amount of investment to the bulk water supply, yeah. since it's a God-given resource for us, okay. then if we have the secured the bulk water supply, in our country, mm. we should look at our rivers. Yeah. Uh, we should look at our lakes. So that's where we can start big for our, our bulk, okay. bulk supply. Thank you. Did you want to add anything on, on that um, issue, um, Mr. Lekpala? Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, I, I like the where he's going. Um, the Bulacan Bulk Water Project was started during my term as NWSS. And what we, the success factor we see also in many water supply projects are economies of scale and scope. We can't do it na tingi -tingi because you miss out on the economies of scale. Bulk water is one way to do it. You have one agency or company develop the bulk to supply multitude of um, LGUs. It's fine if a city a city needs water, they can develop a dam, but a fourth, fifth class municipality can't do that. So if somebody can do it on a large scale, the small utilities can benefit from the economies that can be derived from these large projects. But it has to be done but the question is, there's still a gap. Who should instigate these large bulk water projects? Another area also that we think should be explored is can national local government come in to help subsidize some of these bulk water transmission pipes? I mean, I remember Secretary Singson, when he was water czar, was saying, if government can pay for national roads, why can't it pay for transmission pipes? So at least lower the cost to make it more affordable across all local governments. And perhaps that's where national government can come in and leverage their funds with, with um, LUAS funds or other funds to make sure these large projects become more available and more affordable. Thank you. Thank you for that.
Um, let me now call on Manila Water Services, um, Mr. Roel Espiritu, and then after that, Manila Waters Company. Manila Water, I mean. But Mr. Roel Espiritu first. Um, um, Madam Chairman. Madam Chairman. With you. Madam Chairman, excuse me. Uh, my, my colleague, uh, Ronald Padua, the head of our water supply operation, will do the presentation. In okay. Of my name. The head of what? what? Who is he? Okay. Madam Chairman, uh, Please allow me to present in behalf of my email. Oh, but what, what is your title? What is your role? You have, yes. you have, another, you have another gadget on. So, nag echo kami. Kindly ask your companions to turn off their, their, their to mute, no? Okay na yun, di ba? If they mute yet. Yes, Pop. Okay. Mm, well, I'll just be sharing my, my, my screen. But I'm asking who you are. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, Madam Chairman, I'm Ron, uh, Engineer Ronald Padua, the head of Water Supply Operations Division of Maynilad. Okay, proceed. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, uh, okay. uh, we, were, we were tasked by the committee to, to, to make a short presentation of the uh, existing water supply situation of Maynilad and how we are preparing for a possible water shortage, considering oh. that uh, we were th there is a pronouncement from Pag-asa that we, we are. Hey, can I facing. can I in, can I intervene? Lang yes, this ma hearing is not particularly on your water shortage. It's mm -hmm. not for this particular water shortage today, tomorrow. It's for sustainability of water throughout the decades and the years to come. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I really don't need you to specify okay. the immediate. You can pass through it, but you only have a few minutes. It's really the long-term solution that I need to hear. Yes, madam. Maybe, uh, uh, okay, yes. Let me go straight, maybe. Just, just a brief background only, Maynila is servicing the west uh, west side of Metro Manila, uh, basically uh, the areas of Kamanaba, ang Caloacan, Malabang, Nabotas, part of Ma Manila, uh, Paranaque, Muntinlupa, uh, Las Piñas, and some portions of Cavite, uh, five, five cities and municipalities in Cavite. And that's being handled by Metro Pacific Investment Corporation, DMCI, and Marobeni. And uh, we just started the, the new concession uh, last 2007, uh, which is 10 years uh, younger from the old uh, or, or the original concession agreement, which started in 1997, or the privatization of MWSS. Uh, previously, this is just as one slide uh, comparing the, the situation when, when the new Maynila uh, entered into the picture. Uh, previously, there were only about 677 uh, thousand water service connections, or uh, roughly same as household, and we are now at we are now servicing about 1.5 million uh, water service connection. And previously, only about 32 percent of those cost customers are it, uh, having 24 hours water supply uh, availability. As of end of 2022, there are about 80 percent of our customers experiencing 24 hour water availability. Okay, I, I'll I'll skip this slide. Is this just for for the uh, uh, um, before you go to the, can you go back to your yes, last slide? Yes, ma'am. When you say that now 80% have 24-hour water supply, so yes, what is the reason that the 20% do not have water supply? Okay, Paul. Uh, we still need to to uh, install or lay more pipes to cover to cover uh, the, the the remaining 20%. We also need to to. Uh, replace uh, existing old deteriorated pipelines mm -hmm. so that we can be able to reduce the, the losses in those system and we can be able to push more water to the far plung airless in our distribution network. And uh, also we are uh, waiting for uh, new water sources that we are developing uh, together with uh, MWSS and uh, this to, to cover the, the future demand that, uh, that our service area 
is uh, uh, envisioning to, to, to happen. No? So is pipes the reason why there's always no water in Paranaque? Um, uh, I'll discuss it on the, the succeeding slide for the, okay. for the Paranaque area. Okay. Thank you. Sige po. Uh, our system in Maynila is, is subdivided into two. One is the Angat Ipo water system. Uh, the Angat Ipo water system is highly dependent on the availability of stored water from Angat Dam. So in terms of sustainability, we need to ensure that uh, whenever there are, there are uh, uh, climate situations that may affect the ability to, to, to uh, save the stored water in Angat Dam, uh, we need to do uh, because if if the stored water and gatam is is, is at, at a lower level, of course the the uh, allocation for MWSS is being uh, being uh, lowered lowered down and good good enough. Last last uh, April 6, 15 to May thirty one, we were given uh, the go signal from the National Water Regulation Board that uh, the allocation for MWSS was increased to fifty two cms. And uh, we just need to ensure that uh, for this, uh, the influence area of uh, our Angat Ipo water system, we have will have no more water interruptions, and uh, we need to to uh, submit to the board the future mitigation mitigating uh, projects that we need to undertake to ensure that uh, we won't be affected anymore in the future. Okay. Um, also, for another system that we have is the Laguna Lake water system. Uh, just in 2009, Maynila endeavored of putting up a our new water treatment facilities that draws its raw water from Laguna Lake. And uh, we are very much affected by the varying water quality of the Laguna Lake water, uh, specifically on the turbidity and algal bloom. Uh, this is, mom, is the one affecting uh, uh, our customers in Paranaque whenever there are um, spikes or uh, continuous uh, higher turbidity or yung paglabo po ng tubig uh, dun sa raw water namin from, from Laguna Lake. Our ability to produce water compliant to Philippine national standards for drinking water is affected and we were constrained to reduce our productions on, on those uh, episodes. Um, our normal production for this plant is about 280 to 300 million liters per day and uh, due to the impact of the high tur or prolonged high turbidity in the L Laguna Lake, we went to as low as 180 million liters per day, which affects about uh, about 200,000 water service connection or almost equivalent to household. Uh, as of today, our combined production for the plant is uh, about 270 to 290 MLD uh, because of the things that we've done in the plant and also the, the improvement in the uh, raw water quality from Laguna Lake. Uh, we've listed, I'll skip this slide, but we just listed some of the uh, mitigating projects uh, that we, 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 we are envisioning to be completed within this year. And also these things that we will be doing inside the Potatan water treatment plants. But on top of this technical intervention, I just wanted to highlight this, that we are in constant collaboration with gov government agencies for the improvement of the water quality of Laguna Lake, uh, specifically with DNR, with LLD, and of course, uh, and WSS. And uh, aside from that, we also need to ensure uh, redundancy in, uh, in, in uh, water supply sources for Metro Manila, uh, and uh, one of which, of course, as we, we all know, is the, the one being, constru being constructed by MWSS right now, which is the Kaliwa Dam, okay, which will give... Uh, uh, additional water source for Metro Manila. This is the uh, supply versus, uh, versus demand curve of, of Manila. Um, uh, mentioning uh, at the bottom of the, of the graph, some of the new water sources that we are envisioning to be completed uh, in the succeeding years. And uh, one of which is the Kaliwa Dam Project or our Teresa Water Treatment Plant that will yield 300 million liters per day come 2027. Uh, that's all for me, ma'am. Parang wala ka naman diniscuss sa sustainability. Anong meron? Anong... Kasi kaya ka namin inimbita dahil sa sustainability. Uh, you mentioned <laughs> lang na you're in... You mentioned you're in continuous discussions. I wrote it down eh. Uh, uh, you know, on, on the quality of... On the quality of Laguna Lake. Pero other than that, wala ka naman din iska. So, do you just, can you just submit? Kasi, 
Ma'am, ma'am, if 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 uh, we we may be allowed to to share some more of our uh, initiative. Yan. Eh, ikaw nga ang sustainability officer, di ba? Tapos pinasa mo naman doon sa isang kasama mo. So wala tuloy akong narinig sa sustainability. Kayo naman, no? Di ba? Hindi ba clear ang directions namin? Head of Quality, Sustainability, and Resiliency, Mr. Roel Espiritu. So, sino ba magdi-discuss nun? Yes, Ma'am, uh, I, I will, this will be sharing some, ano, some of our initiative. But because we, we just received a, also a message from the committee to discuss our uh, mitigation on the, ano, on the, uh, the uh, water no, issues no. Uh, right now. So, this was sent to us. So, that's why... That is that is what we prepared to share uh, from the uh, Senate Committee on Sustainability. We were asked to discuss issues on water shortage and to give update on uh, the mitigation that we are doing. Uh, Sorry, yeah, but in the interest of time, kasi I'm trying to manage our time very well. So, medyo... But maybe if you just give us two minutes. Lang ako dun sa... Sige, ganito na lang. Can, you, can I get back to you? Let me just call on uh, Manila Water Company muna. No? Tapos balik, balikan kita. Uh, Sige, tapos just give me a short uh, presentation or discussion on your sustainability discussion, ma yes, ma okay. plans. Thank you. So, okay. can I call now on um, Manila Water... Um, well, I have two names here, Mr. Emboltorio, the Operation Group Director, and also Ms. Sarah Bergado, the Sustainability Head. You decide who's going to speak. I just want to hear your, your thoughts on sustainability. Can you hear me? Kasi nag, mukhang nag-freeze tayo. Manila Water, are you there? Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Good afternoon. This is Jomar Emboltorio, uh, the yes. Head of Operations of Manila Water. Uh, I will be the one presenting now. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon Madam Chair. Please proceed. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, Senator Pia Atcayetano, and the Senate Committee on SDGs, Innovations, and Future Thinking. Good afternoon also to our hardworking Philippine water sector members and uh, other stakeholders. My name is Jomar Emboltorio, um, Head of the Water Supply and Wastewater Operations of Manila Water for the East Zone. Uh, we thank the Senate for inviting us uh, in this very important discussion that is aligned with the SDGs, particularly SDG number six, with the objective to ensure uh, availability and sustainability management, sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. Uh, just an introduction of Manila Water. Manila Water uh, services the east zone. Uh, of Metro Manila encompassing 23 cities and municipalities. Uh, that includes um, Mandaluyong, Pasig, Pateros, San Juan, Taguig, Marikina, uh, and most parts of uh, Quezon City, portions of Manila, as well as following towns of Rizal, uh, which include Angono, Tipolo, Baras, Binangonan, Tainta, Cardona, Halala. Morong, Pililla, Rodriguez, and Mateo, Tanay, Taytay, and uh, Teresa. For 25 years, Manila Water has been uh, has maintained its mission of creating an exceptional water uh, customer experience in the provision of sustainable solutions vital to health and life. Our partnership with the MWSS in, provision, in the provision of water and wastewater and customer services in the East Zone of Metro Manila uh, shown in the slide in the province of Rizal, has become a model for operationalizing large-scale public-private partnerships in developing countries such as the Philippines. 
Um, when Manila Water started in uh, the East Zone in 1997, there were only 300. Oh, sorry. Sorry, ma'am. Just fixing the slide. Okay, for 25 years, Manila Water has maintained its mission in creating an exceptional customer service. Oh, sorry. Manila Water's efforts to expand our network and reduce uh, system losses have increased. have increased water availability to nearly 100% of the central distribution system. Um, operational e efficiencies have uh, had been prioritized, enabling Manila Water to maintain a low NRW uh, or non-revenue water, which is at 15%. This NRW is among the lowest in the region, uh, noting that the standard threshold as recommended by the World Bank uh, is 25% or lower. We are confronted with daunting challenges. Um, amid the back, amid the backdrop of uh, climate change, of ecosystems and communities becoming more vulnerable, and the constraints brought about by the increasing needs of an expanding population, we are feeling the urgency to deliver improved outcomes. Angat supplies. Angat supplies 95% of Metro Manila's water needs with an average demand of 3%. Uh, increase every year and the additional 15% demanding during demand during the summer months. Uh, annual population growth is at 1.7% uh, in Metro Manila. Plus, we have the challenges brought about by the climate change, such as El Nino. With the existing challenges, Manila Water has developed four sustainability pillars as guideposts for implementing our service improvement plans over the years, namely water security. This is uh, diversifying away from Angat Dam as the main source for the East Zone. Um, For the East Zone, uh, reduced reliance on groundwater in the non-East Zone, build sustainable, reliable infrastructure. Manila Water recognizes the need to manage uh, water sustainability and efficiently throughout our supply and distribution network. In this regard, we consistently maintain a non-revenue water level of below 15%, which is among the lowest in the region. Um, we also embedded environmental stewardship in our blueprint um, 
management plan that uh, fully integrates biodiversity management, uh, biodiversity management, reforestation, enrichment planting, and social development programs for community volunteers as well in place are well in place to protect uh, critical watersheds in Angat, Ipo, La Mesa, General Nakar, Alats, uh, Upper Marikina, and Laguna. Second is service accessibility, which is uh, laying more distribution lines to reach more customers, construct new facilities to serve more areas. Manila Water has consistently complied with national regulations and standards for safe drinking water, such as the Philippine National Standards for Drinking Water. Uh, likewise, uh, Manila Water continuously elaborate, collaborates with its stakeholders for the continuous provision of water supply in the East Zone. Uh, the same level of commitment is also being observed by our subsidiaries and operating units outside of Metro Manila and result for the delivery of service of our service obligations. Third pillar Sorry for that, Madam Chair. We're having some technical difficulties. Yeah, I actually need you to wrap up. And I I, I know you're trying to fix your presentation. Yes, it's okay. Just Let's just get on with it, please. Okay. Okay. Uh, for our next is our service continuity uh, involves the rehabilitation and uh, improvement of existing facilities such as retrofitting of water treatment plants and reservoirs, um, mitigate natural calamity risks by constructing climate resilient assets with backup power supply to ensure the continuity of our operations even during natural disasters, automate uh, distribution network. And last uh, of our pillars is environmental sustainability. Uh, this includes the construction of wastewater treatment plants and sewerage systems um, to comply with biological nutrient removal standards uh, and, and join stakeholders in our environmental advocacies, uh, which includes Toka Toka and uh, Lakbayan. Since the start of the concession, Manila Water has rehabilitated one major sewage treatment plant and constructed four more with a total capacity of treating uh, 410 million liters per day of wastewater. Uh, additional wastewater treatment plant projects and conveyances are also in the pipeline for future customers. Uh, in the next five years, uh, we will co we continue to uh, dislodge, uh, we continue to do sanitation services for our uh, customers. And um, studies are also underway for the reuse of treated effluent as mentioned earlier during the discussion, from STPs to advance circular economy, scaling up wastewater for potable or non-potable reuse can be a reliable water source at a time when fresh water availability has become more reliable due to the effects of climate change. This is a second to the last slide, ma'am. Um, we have four water systems uh, uh, in our plan, in our master plan, uh, these are the Angat La Mesa water system, uh, which involves the, uh, diverting raw water from Sumag 
River in Quezon to the Angat Reservoir. The second is the Laguna Lake Water System, which involves East Bay, the construction of East Bay Water Supply Project System. Um, then the, the phase one will be uh, providing 50 MLD and ultimately it will be, it will add another 200 MLD or a total of 250 MLD coming from Laguna Lake. The third system is the Antipolo water system uh, that will be sourced from the Wawa Kalawis water supply system uh, that will provide 518 million liters per day for 1.95 million uh, customers. And the last is the East Sources Water System. This is the long-term uh, water sources, which include Kaliwa and Water Supply Project and other long-term East Sources. That's our presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Sige. Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Emboltorio. Um, I will ask no for um for you to join us in the TWG uh because I feel like the role that both um Mainilad and Manila Water have for for uh this sustainability efforts are very crucial and I know that most of the hearings that you have been invited to are very specific to the current water supply. So I feel like there's a disjunct in your appreciation, and I'm referring really both to Manila and Manila Waters, no, in, in the information that I want, that I need no, for this committee. Um, I appreciate the, the information that you gave me, but I'm not, it's not this committee's um, focus on uh, what, what you're doing now, today, for the supply today. My focus is the future and what interventions you're doing, um, what studies do you have uh, to preserve the water supply that we have. I'm not asking just for like, oh, from Angat Dam, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, access another river. Kasi limited yung rivers natin, di ba? So like from the biggest concessionaires of water, I think you're the biggest, right? There's no water district naman that can compete. Uh, kailangan ko marinig talagang yung sustainability plan nyo. Di ba? Paano ba natin si save tong country na to? How do we ensure, Mr. Emboltorio and Mr. Uh, Espiritu, that your grandchildren and my grandchildren will have water to drink? And that those that don't even have water now, maglalakad nga ng 25 minutes, di pa natin alam kung balikan yun or one way. Uh, mas marami sa kanilang... Uh, in one minute, may water sila. Or if that's really an, a difficult uh, uh, to achieve, and of course, kayo, Metro Manila naman ang, ang kayo, so baka hindi nyo masyado concern yun. But you're water experts, di ba? So I'd love to hear then, it may not be within your district na may implement nyo yun, but I consider you as part of the bigger uh, water sector family, right? So that's what I was hoping to hear from, from all of you. Anyway, I'll just give the floor briefly to Mr. Espiritu because I, I said I'll give you um, time, a few more minutes, but it's almost three and I have session at three o'clock. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma just going directly to, to, to your question on the sustainability. Uh, currently, we are now developing, in fact, we have started using uh, uh, potable, uh, potable reuse of wastewater. Uh, we have commenced uh, treating uh, uh, the effluent of our Paranaque wastewater treatment plant uh, last October, and it has a capacity of 10 MLD. So it's a called even the United Nations uh, WHO called this as a climate independent source of water. So instead of just uh, bringing back to the, the bodies of water the treated effluent, we are uh, harnessing the use of technology to convert it to potable water. In fact, in this uh, current business plan that we have, we plan to expand the, the cap our capacity to another 90 uh, MLD or million liters more. It's really to future-proof yung, ano, yung ating concession uh, because of the effect of the, the climate change. So that's one thing moving forward that we are doing. But of course, very basic also, ma'am, is... Uh, uh, we are into the protection and the, the, uh, of the watershed uh, that uh, where we source our water. Uh, in the next, uh, in this current business plan, together with MWSS, 
we are going to reforest about 350 hectares uh, of forest in uh, in the, the Ipo watershed. Uh, this is on top of the 1 million trees uh, or about 800 hectares that we have already planted in the last 15 years. Uh, also, uh, uh, vital also is our, the retrofitting of our plants to handle uh, much higher turbidity as uh, we have experienced since uh, Typhoon Ondoy. So the completion of the retrofitting of our La Mesa 1 and La Mesa 2, uh, originally those plants can only handle 200 uh, NTU of turbidity. Now it can handle, it will be able to handle 2,000 uh, NTU uh, once completed, hopefully within, within the years. Uh, also, uh, as uh, no, we are as, as similar to Manila Waters, uh, also guided guidance from MWS as we are lessening our dependence uh, with the Angata water system. Uh, right now, we are about uh, we started in, 19, in 1997 about 98 percent dependency on the Angat. Now it's down to 90 percent because we are able to develop uh, new water sources. And uh, we are developing additional water sources uh, uh, in uh, the in Cavite. Uh, hopefully, when uh, the four modular treatment plants that uh, uh, is uh, ongoing now, right now, construction and bidding will be will bring more than an additional uh, more than thirty MLD uh, in the next two years. So, uh, basically, those those are the things that we are doing to also uh, provide sustainable water to our concession area. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's actually what I wanted to hear. No, So sorry on our end if there was miscommunication. But again, I repeat, this is a hearing of the Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation, and Futures Thinking. So yung future proofing, yung sustainability plans uh, for the next generations is really what I wanted to hear. Um, I understand. Thank you for that, no, Mr. Uh, uh, Ruel Espiritu. Sa Manila Waters, does Miss Sarah Bergado want to say anything? But I really only have one to two minutes because I have session at three. But I know that you have a sustainability head. So baka that's the voice I need to hear for this hearing. Hello, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Yes. I hope I can be heard. Yeah, for yes. the yes, for Manila Water, Madam Chair, we have a sustainability agenda and simply put it's uh, to protect the environment and to help the communities to thrive better by providing our water and wastewater services and also to build a culture of trust and um, care because that's essentially the how sustainability um, is being handled uh, by corporates such as uh, Manila Water. So just to piggyback on what Mr. Espiritu and what Mr. Emboltorio has uh, mentioned, man, it's really about um, the impact that we have to the communities and the, to the environment. So I think it was mentioned that it's security, securing water supply from here on up to 10 years from now, 30 years from now, and that's by finding new and alternative sources of water and protecting our watershed areas, considering biodiversity and um, circular economy as well, taking care of our watershed areas. And um, that thing also includes uh, wastewater treatment by abating uh, wastewater um, and uh, pollution on our waterways as part of our mandate as a water and wastewater utility. Um, I guess, Madam Chair, perhaps you could... Um, prepare a more um, comprehensive uh, presentation on how uh, Manila Water as a corporation is handling overall sustainability. That would be up, uh, more for uh, your yes. committee. Yes, exactly. Thank you, yeah. Sige. We will hear more from you. I wish I didn't have to rush you, but I do because my, my session starts at 3. Thank you, Ms. Sarah Bergado. Can I, can I call on Neda, uh, Brian Cobaldes, but... You have 10 seconds because I have to rush to... Yes, ma'am, just, uh, uh -uh. just to clarify very quickly, the, the 30 minutes po is uh, under the definition of uh, WHO JMP. So, sinasabi po nila, okay. if, the collection, if the collection time exceeds 30 minutes for a round trip, including queuing, 
the service is considered to be limited. So yun po yung definition nila sa ganong klase ng service, limited po. All right. Thank po, you for that. So on that thank note, you. let me let me leave this thought with everyone in this hearing, no? And of course, thank you for spending the last two hours of your day with us. Um, I guess that's the question because clearly there's no one here who can tell me that uh, we will have water accessible to all. Not tomorrow, not in 10 years, even with the billions of pesos that Attorney Reville said that he they are capable of disposing of. So on that note, uh, how do we lessen that time so that uh, there are more people who will have access as defined. Like five minutes away, ten minutes away, may tubig na sila. What are these? Like we, I, I noted that um, kayo nagsabi no, na level three yung ino-offer nyo. Pero the reality is uh, of the 1.8 million you will add to those that you are servicing, there are still millions and millions that won't have water. So how do we offer to them is it a level two then, but a sustainable supply? I'm just looking at you because we had this discussion, but I'm addressing this to everyone in the hearing yesterday and today. And before my staff comes up to me again to remind me that I will be late, the hearing is suspended. I thank everyone, but that's the next question I want us to discuss. What are the alternate plans for true sustainability? Thank you very much.